Hello to all of you unconventional conventionists. Welcome to Rocky Talkie. I'm Meg. I'm Aaron. And I'm Jacob. And this week we're asking a question. But before we do, let's do the thing. How was your week, guys? Did you get up to anything fun? Oh, man. All right. So I love, I love, love to bike. Biking is like my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And I, I've been alive on this earth and biking for like the past five years. And it's such a, like, it's not that obscure, but I don't know. In Rocky, there aren't a lot of like fitness enthusiasts who are like, yeah, I fucking love to get out and, and do shit. Like there's a lot, it's a lot of nightlife and stuff. So I haven't run into many people that I can be like, hey, do you want to go for a bike ride? But this past like month ago, one of my friends I've learned is uh, runs every now and again. Her name is Sarah. She's on our cast. Shout out, Sarah. And I invited her on a bike ride. And for like the second time in all my five years of biking, I got to bike with a friend. I This past uh, Tuesday, we went on a, wait, not Tuesday. It was yesterday. So this past yesterday day, which was Wednesday, I think. Yeah. Holy shit. That was so fucking recent. God, the days just meld together. Went on a fucking bike ride. I woke up at the crack of 9 goddamn a.m. and had a good old time with Sarah. So that was awesome. Yeah. What about you, Aaron? Isn't it just? I uh, I do not bike. I did all of my biking when I was a small child. Also, it terrifies me to like even think about biking in New York. Holy crap. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. No, I just, I mean, I don't trust anybody on this road. Uh, I feel that. I certainly wasn't biking this week because uh, I've been a little under the weather. My apologies to all of our listeners out there. If I sound like somebody has bashed me over the head with a bag of cotton balls, that is what my head feels like. Uh, but I am here to talk to all of you. So uh, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, I'm bouncing back, feeling better, but uh, still, still got the sniffles. Still got the sniffles. Sweetie, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Um, I do bike, but I ride a stationary bike, so I can't bike with him very much. He would have to go very slowly. I should get a second stationary bike for my office, and we can, like, smoke weed and ride our stationary bikes together, because <laughs> that's really fun. Um, uh, or you should purchase a bike bike, and we could bike in the outdoor air. I can't even, like, walk in heels that well. <laughs> My my coordination leaves a lot to be desired. You should have seen her. She put on a new pair of Frank heels yesterday and like, oh, legs up to here. And by I mean, she had fallen and flipped over and her legs were up, up all the all the way, all the way. Like up. a turtle. Like a turtle. She could Roll not get back up. It's back. It's tummy roasted <laughs> in the sun. She was like, help me. And I was like, stupid turtle. Um. So what did I do? I took a walk. I went on a really fucking good walk around Washington Square Park with one of our cast members, Rob, yesterday. And that was a lot of fun. It was like the first nice day out. So we just were both in the city and I was like, let's let's meet up in the park. So we met up in the park and we walked around and it was like popping because it was the first nice day. So everybody wanted to go and get outside and it was like really good people watching. There were a lot of jugglers who had illuminated little juggling pins and things. And there was a girl who had poi balls that she was playing with and just, you know, people playing music, people doing stick and poke tattoos, um, lots of stuff. So it was it was a nice evening. It was fun. Then we had dinner. All right. Enough about regular normie life. I think it's time. Um got a little question we want to ask right but before we do that i've got a quick boner to pick a quick little jack in it with jacob if you will now before we continue audience i need you to know that i i know i brought this on myself jack in it with jacob is like it's a moniker i embraced it's a sentence i i lavished in at first but it's gotten to a point that i say that and i think about saying that and my head cringes it's like oh god that's so disgusting i like jack in it with jacob what am i like a, a homeless in the street you know i feel like that meme of of 
I, I don't know, many people who are listening will not have seen this meme, but there's a meme of an adult woman standing very elegantly in a dress and a man looking malnourished <laughs> and beaten up. And, and it's like, honey, time for your 12 o'clock ball flattening. And the implication is that <laughs> this man's balls get flattened regularly. And it's like every time I've got to say, checking it with Jacob, it's like the money machine, the, the Rocky Talkie money machine is milking me. It's flattening my balls for that money line. It's ruining me. Anyway, that's all I needed to say. Continue. I mean, I've I've got some good news then. Like, it, it's it's not called Jacking with Jacob anymore. Holy crap. I did not even, it did not even register that the next line was that no longer will the segment be called that. This is great news, listeners. A few weeks ago, a little context for all you listeners out there. We went to the American Dream Mall in New Jersey. You don't have to do Jersey dirty like that. The mall isn't that far. And let me tell you, it's it's a mall. It's really, really, <laughs> really big. Like, it's huge. And when you go in, you're like, oh, wow, this is a really huge mall. But it's just like, it's not special. Like, it's just like a mall times 10. It's still like, like it's a dead mall. You know, it's like kind of sad. There's, yeah, I'm not, like, you're going to go and you're going to see some cool stuff. Like, there's an amusement park indoors, but and there's, like, a, a snow slopey thing. But it's also just, like, it's a mall, man. If you're expecting anything more than a mall, you're going to be sad. Yeah, like, I was super excited to see. There's the Nickelodeon theme park, right? They've got a couple of roller coasters. There's that ski slope that Jacob just mentioned. Like, I want to see that stuff. I was like, okay, I want to see, like, the world's biggest indoor ski slope in New Jersey. And I was just like... <laughs> Let me check this shit out. And yeah, that stuff was cool. But at the end of the day, we also stood in line for a cappuccino that took like 35 minutes. And the only entertainment while we did was the saddest looking DJ playing late 90s hits for six-year-olds that were trying to break dance. So... That was really weird. I felt for that guy. He was clearly getting paid, but he was DJing to a mall food court, so... No, no, no. This place is fucking huge, though. It has a million things in it. Okay, you guys are a bunch of Debbie Downers. You don't go to the mall because you, like, need to get something from the mall. You go to the mall as a millennial. A, a, a large majority of, like, my high school years were spent just going to the mall to walk the fuck around. And you walk around... And you go into the stores and you look and you see what's up and you wait in line 35 minutes for a cappuccino because that's how long it takes because it's understaffed and run by like other high schoolers. And there's a sad mall DJ and like a guy in an Easter costume taking pictures or Santa or something. And you just go to like people watch and take it in and maybe you find something to buy. But really, it's it's just an excuse, I think. I think that's the spirit of malls now in this the year of our Lord, 2023. Excuse for what? To go do something. To go, like, stand around with your friends and, like, have a goal, right? You're not going to the bar. You're not going to dinner. You're going to the mall. It's just, like, somewhere to go hang. I, I thought mean, it was really fun. Yeah, I, I did get some beef jerky, and I found out that there is a Toys R Us that still exists. So that was cool. Like we watched a kid throw up in a, a candy store, but that's the candy true. store was like three flights tall. Yeah, you don't see that every day. And that was an adult, Meg. It was an adult. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you know, keeping it classy over in the jurors. <laughs> I think if you're throwing up in a candy store, you're a kid in that moment. <laughs> uh, no, certainly he was not. And you know how I know he was not a kid because when a child vomits people react right even if like the greater room doesn't like care or react your party reacts because because you usually have an adult with you and your adult is like oh fuck my child just vomited this guy was with three people another couple and his partner presumably and shortly before he vomited the other couple sensing what was about to happen got up walked away his partner pat him on the back also walked away but not as far she was still nearby but clearly was trying to get away and then the man just sitting in a regular mall chair leaning over a table just eruption from his mouth and no one did 
anything. His partner didn't come back or rub his back or say anything. She walked further away. The other couple went down the stairs to another floor. Like a minute later, I think one of the store attendants came over and like had a mop and stuff, but he was just mop and vomit. And the guy was still sadly like leaning over the table, looking down into a pool of his own vomiture. It was so sad and, and terribly hilarious at the same time. It was pretty funny. He he looked so sad. Like he he came to this nice mall in New Jersey and got so drunk so he could go to the candy store and eat a milkshake and that was the thing that put him over the top. I don't know. It was it was funny as shit though. It was pretty funny. How is this about Rocky, you may ask? Well, let me tell you, dear listener. While we were at this supposed American dream air quotes mall, we also went to the Hot Topic. And I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I've been sold a lie, as I do whenever I enter a Hot Topic. I had been told a dirty, disgusting falsehood. Supposedly, Hot Topic is this goth or punk store, and Rocky people used to shop there or something. At least that's what I'd been told. What I do know for a fact but well, this was a sad, sad store in a very big and even sadder mall. And it sold Funko Pops and Empty Promises, let me tell you. <laughs> Hot Topic is like if they cut out like the one-tenth of Target that is for people dressed in black. And they put it into a store and were like, well, what other things do people dressed in black buy? And how can we market up the most? And none of it, it nothing feels real. Oh my goodness, it's just like uh, like stand after stand of tiny trinkets that are mean, mean nothing. None of it is like, feels any one sort of way. It's all just sort of, clearly, like, you feel like a, a big guy in a suit is, is trying to sell you something at the highest price that he thinks maybe a goth person would enjoy. Um, and they don't have, they didn't have a t-shirt for any of the bands I like, so I hated that. How, how long had it been since you'd been in a Hot Topic? Probably mm, pre-pandemic was the last time I was in okay. a Hot Topic because they only exist in malls and that was the last time I was in a mall. Sure, So, but, but sometime within the last five years. So you've seen the decline of Hot Topics over at least the last like decade or so. I don't th think I pay enough attention to the content of Hot Topics to have recognized a decline. But if you tell me, Aaron, that there's been a decline, I trust you. Oh my God. Oh, I have supporting evidence. There has been such a decline. Are you kidding me? When I was in high school, you would go into the Hot Topic and it was like the coolest place because you thought that it was intimidating to like, the normies, you know? TM. And you would go in there and you would buy your eyeliner and your fishnet tops to wear underneath your regular tops. And like your trip pants and your little, little skater schoolgirl trip skirts, which are terrible, by the way. Those are so bad. Do you remember how hot we thought those were? And your <laughs> manic panic hair color. And you would, you would go and you would come out with all of these things, either like in exchange for money or shoved in your trip pants that you stole all the time before. You felt so edgy. And everything smelled like weed in there for no reason because it was in the mall. Like nobody was fucking smoking weed in there. It was all sprayed with weed scent. It really was. Like the way that Spencer's gift is, it was sprayed well, with like. Well, Spencer's actually weed. sold weed scented spray. So that one I can kind of understand. Why did we want these things? Because <laughs> it's cool to smell like weed, man. Spray <laughs> my room with artificial weed. It's so your friends think you're cool and they're like, whoa, dude, hook me up. You want to smoke? And you're like, what? No, man, I don't smoke. I'm cool. I have weed scented spray. Like. It's what hacky sacking smells like. So what's the deal here? I've always heard Hot Topic was where Rocky people shopped and they had Rocky stuff. I didn't see it. There were like two shirts and maybe a pin or, or something. Clearly I am not of that mall rat, Hot Topic, Orange, Julius, and Panda Express generation. But what gives? 
I feel like their online store has more Rocky Horror stuff than I saw in that mall. I mean, that much is true, right? Around the 25th anniversary, so think like late 90s, early 2000s, both Hot Topic and Spencer's Gift did have exclusive Rocky Horror merchandise, and like a lot of it. I mean, most of this was more junk than not, but... It's all the stuff you would expect, you know, pins and buttons and records and t-shirts and action figures and posters and toys. And I mean, you, you get the gist of where I'm going. Yeah, there was none of that when we went. Uh, Funko Pops, anime stuff. So, oh my God, there was so much anime stuff. Uh, the saddest collection of Bachelorette Party sexy toys and overpriced teen goth clothes. Oh, oh. And those rubber gauges that Josh bought, which was the whole reason we went to this mall in the first place, was specifically for rubber gauges. But, like, okay, here's the thing. Totally, that's what it is now. It didn't used to be like that. Both Spencer's and Hot Topic had a lot more variety and a lot wider of a stock back in the early 2000s. And they were always around to sell you, like, a $5 pair of fishnets. Because, let's be real, 5 bucks or 20 bucks, fishnets are going to fucking rip no matter how much you spend on them. Yeah, I know. I've heard people say it, but I don't see it. How did it get like that? Why was it the store for a generation of Rocky Horror fans? And where did all the Rocky stuff go? And why was it that store? Weren't there other stores that had Rocky crap? It just doesn't add up, man. I'm telling you. So this Ask a Question is all about Rocky retail. What? No. No. I guess. I just wanted to bitch about Hot Topic, but if you're gonna have to go and make a thing of it, I suppose we could. I mean, you're always doing this, where you you take the thing I was excited about and you turn it into the thing you're when excited about. When the Rocky about. Horror Picture Show released in 1975, the idea of merchandising for feature film releases was still a rarity. Just a few years later, when George Lucas was negotiating with 20th Century Fox over his little film in a galaxy far, far away, you may have heard of it, it's called Star Wars, when George Lucas was making Star Wars, he traded half a million dollars of his director fee in exchange for keeping the merchandising rights. It sounded like a great deal for Fox. In the late 70s, licensed product tie-ins were mainly for TV shows aimed at kids, Trading cards, toys, lunch boxes of the monkeys and the Partridge family, as well as merch for musicians like the Beatles and Elvis Presley. So if you wanted film merch, you were stuck with what the theaters had. Posters, lobby cards, promotional buttons or t-shirts. Right, but all of that was really designed for the theaters to use or like for their employees. It rarely made its way into audience hands. Occasionally, there'd be a tie-in paperback novel or like a soundtrack album, but in 1975, it wasn't the norm. So when Lucas traded a half million dollars to retain the merchandising rights for Star Wars in 1977, nobody at Fox really questioned this. A fun fact, as of 2021, Star Wars has sold over $12 billion worth of toys, while the films themselves had collected half of that between the box office and home media sales. Wow, that's crazy. So, yeah, they, they like, they sold 200% of what, like, made them famous in the first place. That, damn. Like, imagine, yeah, holy shit. So, God, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, I guess that George Lucas guy might have known what he was doing. Yeah, but that wasn't on anybody's radar when Rocky Horror released. Fox had produced some shirts as promos, but, I mean, these were a rarity even then. Other than the soundtrack album, there wasn't much out there. But as midnight screenings became a thing, there was a gaping hole that the community wanted to fill. A hey. This resulted in a lot of bootlegs. T-shirts, pins, and AP props like matches and bags of rice. Imagine bootlegging a bag of rice. These are produced at kitchen tables and in basements and garages, always varying in quality and price. And they were hawked at midnight shows, the sellers walking up and down the line of waiting audience members. According to the Rocky Horror Wiki, 
The first known fan-made merchandise was a hand-drawn silk-screened sweatshirt of Frank. It was produced in late 75 by two teens who saw the film at UA Westwood Theater during the opening weekend. They were... Holly Field and Hilary Ladin. So, with a lackluster release in 1975, and midnight shows not really taking off until 76, Fox didn't really know there was even this need for merchandise to be filled. Early issues of the Transylvania newsletter, produced by the fan club out of New York, had the very minimal official offerings. And they were limited to the kinds of things we mentioned before. Jerry Olinger's movie material store sold the stuff that the theaters had access to. The posters, the photos, the buttons. You could even get a copy of the movie trailer on 16mm film for only $18.50. And the other merchants that were listed in the Transylvanian had the t-shirts and the soundtrack album. And, and, and really, officially, that was it. And all of this was mail order only. I'd have to get out my checkbook. Yeah. I'd have to get out a checkbook. Uh, or, or you could send a money order. Grandpa, you're talking gibberish again. Take your pills. <laughs> it, it was almost four years until the first officially licensed items were released. A set of six pin badges that were created by A&B Creations, but this wasn't until 1979. Not long after, a series of products began to become available, starting with the Hankin book and followed by trading cards, the 1980 calendar, and the movie novel. But all of this was still kind of seen as an oddity. In 1981, Tim Curry and Meatloaf appeared on Saturday Night Live, and they were just lampooning the idea of this official Rocky Horror merchandise. <laughs> it's such a good sketch. Yeah. <laughs> Tim and Meats One Stop Shop. That's that's really interesting to think about, like just in context of having Rocky merch now. That, that damn yeah. The joke resonated then, but seems so ridiculously outdated now. Film merch is just there for everything. Not a single Disney or Star Wars or DC movie comes without a huge pile of merchandise tie-ins. So I guess all this merch started to get out there, but I can't imagine there was a hot topic selling it back then. You had to mail order this stuff, or, or what? Maybe a record store or a bookstore might have it in stock, or, or maybe you were lucky enough to have a local store that catered to the obscure. Pretty much, that's how you could find it, but with the 80s rise in consumerism, the ubiquity of teenage American mall culture, and the pop culture explosion that was ushered in by the launch of MTV in 1981, you saw a lot more interest in merchandising tie-ins for films, TV, and just other iconic parts of pop culture. In 1983, you saw the mad frenzy as shoppers punched and clawed their way towards Cabbage Patch dolls. Transformer sales reached almost 950 million in the 1980s, and as we alluded to before, Star Wars redefined the kinds of products that could be brought to market. As Rocky grew into a cult sensation throughout the 80s, it found itself in this landscape of increased consumerism. And often, what consumers wanted was merchandise about pop culture. One man noticed this trend, and his name was Orv Madden. Madden was a vice president of children's place and accessory place divisions at the Federated Department Stores. And if you don't know the Federated Department Stores... Well, you do. It's a mega corporation that is one of America's largest retail chains. Stores like Bloomingdale's, Birdings, Lazarus, and Stearns. Madden was a man with a lifelong devotion to contemporary music. And when MTV first made waves in the early 80s, he realized that there was a huge consumer market for pop culture-inspired apparel and accessories. He saw that while the market was being served by smaller, independent, local stores, it was being largely overlooked by any of the big national chains. At the end of the decade, Madden and his wife put all of their savings into the opening of the first Hot Topic store, located in a mall in Montclair, California. The store sold band t-shirts, music posters, and trendy costume jewelry. But his vision for Hot Topic was far bigger than one store. 
He wanted Hot Topic to be a national chain prevalent in every upscale mall. And over the next few years, raised over $11 million to open new stores all around the country. And they followed the same pattern as the flagship, a low-lit, gothic, teenage nightclub with inventory that shocked parents and delighted their kids. Yeah, so the story of Hot Topic itself is quite fascinating, but long story short, they found a huge success. They kept up with the trends, and the stores were just jam-packed, not with just shirts, but a massive assortment of novelty items. The company formed a huge team of buyers to canvas for new items to feature in the stores. They made sure their products turned over fast, they were always trendy, and they hit the shelves right as the trend exploded into the pop culture landscape. For employees all over the country, if a salesperson went to a concert, the company would pay for the ticket. If they wrote up a fashion report the next day, this helped track regional and local trends and fashions. In one case, a Hot Topic employee attended an all-night rave and the next day presented the company with an idea for creating special jeans pockets to store glow sticks. Within months, it was a store exclusive. What? Why would there be pockets? What's the, like... Why do you need a pocket just for glow sticks? Like, are glow sticks shaped that in a way that pockets can't handle? You know what I mean? Like, regular pants have pockets that you could put glow sticks in. Well, if you're super fucking high and your your glow stick gets stuck in the bottom of your trip pants pockets, like, you gotta put your hand all the way down to your ankle to find that fucker, you know? How deep were pockets in the 80s? What? I sense you have not worn bondage pants in a while. Yeah, do you not know how trip pants work? Uh... I don't know what either of those are, bondage or trip pants. I mean, oh. I assume bondage pants are just like leather. Like no, those the, they're those big ass canvas like uh, like black baggy pants that have like straps all over them, and they have like all this kind of like they're just super baggy and like all over the place. I looked up bondage. I looked up trip pants and bondage pants, and the image results for both is like exactly the same what the fuck are they is is what one of those is a sex thing and one of them is not this no is no no ridiculous. so they marketed them as called bondage pants because they have all those strappy bullshitty things on them and they're kind of a sex thing because they're really fucking hot that's only you <laughs> <laughs> So. Those are some sick pants. Those are. I think the right. guy from Kingdom Hearts wears those. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> so by the mid-90s, on the back of their bondage pants, Hot Topic had sales of over $44 million and had opened almost 80 locations nationwide. And right around there, this is the early into the mid-90s, is where Rocky Horror is suddenly back on the tip of the pop culture bubble. Rocky had endured successfully for the better part of two decades, and it was now nearing the 20th anniversary. It had more fans than ever, and the fans had proven that they were hungry for merchandise. Nom, 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 nom. You saw everything. You saw shirts and pins and jackets and comic books and purses and lunchboxes and even those the, the ever so terrible, those headliner bobbleheads. Oof, those creepy not funko things yeah and i mean hot topic stocked a huge variety of this rocky merch it was now by the mid 90s a property that both kids and their parents recognized it had nostalgia but it still appealed to modern pop culture and it had ties to Hot Topic's ever-evolving alternative music flavor, right? It was first punk and goth and later new metal and emo and so on and so on. And however they got to, I don't know, whatever they do now, anime weeb stuff. I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, go anime weeb stuff. You also saw Hot Topic's main competitor, Spencer's Gifts. Getting in on the action. Founded in 1947 as a catalog company, Spencer's had been in the mall retail game since the early 60s. Acquired by Universal Studios, it grew to over 700 stores in the 90s. Spencer's also saw increased demand for pop culture merch and throughout the decade pivoted their inventory to the novelties, clothes, really shitty sex toys, 
horror figures and those weird electric ball thingies that define the Spencer's experience. By the late 90s and the early 2000s, the now largely Gen X and millennial Rocky Horror generation was gearing up for the 25th anniversary, a massive opportunity for any merchandising department. This saw the launch of a whole new line of merch. And finally, we got toys! Uh, Vital Toys launched their line of figures, though the run was never completed after the initial three toys were released. Sad face. Uh, this was also when those bendy figures came out, and like that big-ass talking Frank doll, that thing was actually a Spencer's exclusive. The back of those bendy figures is a perfect time capsule of the late 90s, early 2000s mall landscape. It was featured at Suncoast, On Cue, Media Play, and Sam Goody. All record or movie stores, mostly CDs and DVDs by that point. Koala had this kind of uh, checkout adjacent tchotchke crap section. Think like uh, Barnes and Noble still has. This is also when we saw those official Fox bag costumes. You know those terrible ones that you see every year at Spirit Halloween? Fun fact, it was in 1999 that Spencer's Gifts acquired Spirit Halloween. So that's why you saw all the bag costumes and the masks appearing in Spencer's. By 2013, Spirit Halloween stores alone comprised about half of the Spencer's Gifts total annual company revenue. This sounds more like the heyday that people are talking about when they use Hot Topic and Rocky Horror in the same sentence. I mean, it really was. You would go to Hot Topic and they would have Rocky shirts and socks and like figurines. Uh, they'd have pins and hats and records. And then you'd go to Spencer's and they'd have more shirts and posters and toys and fucking bag costumes and wigs. And both stores already stocked all the other shit that appealed to the rocky going sort of people they became the most obvious place especially in small town america to shop for generic rocky crap pick up a poster check out the fishnets the corsets maybe find a columbia mood ring in their shitty jewelry section and then they've got all that crazy makeup and the hair dye that you need to get that proper columbia fake red not to mention, they had all the other shit we all liked. Marilyn Manson t-shirts, Cartoon Network merch, Nightmare Before Christmas, tarot cards. And of course, all those shitty sex toys. Ooh la la. <laughs> but after the 25th anniversary, so this is after around the early 2000s, there just aren't a lot of huge milestones that put a pop culture property like Rocky Horror back at the top of social consciousness, at least not until the 50th anniversary. So as we get into the mid-2000s, the quality and the variety of Rocky products declined, and Hot Topic and Spencer's were left with a lot of Rocky Horror stock that they offered at very steep discounts. I feel it's also relevant to point out that we're right around the time when the internet and online shopping start to actually be a huge thing for the vast majority of Americans. Absolutely. I, it contributed a ton. So you saw in retail a lot safer choices in Rocky merch. In 2005, you saw the Rocky Horror trivia game, but that was positioned as a mass market product that appeared in big box stores like Walmart and in Target. The mall novelty stores also stocked it, but it was far from the exclusives that had showed up during the 25th anniversary. And, like, probably the best example of this decline in quality is one of the last Spencer's exclusive products from 2007, the Rocky Horror 3D poster. Okay, I've bitched about this thing before. It was, it was basically a shadow box kind of 3D poster of the lips and just the Rocky Horror Picture Show in, in a blood font. Except, when Spencer's made this, the lips are flipped horizontally, and the font isn't even remotely the official double features Rocky font. It's actually an experimental version of a Rocky font 
that was made by a community member, was leaked online, and was never intended or licensed to be used for official merchandise. This thing sold so bad, I remember stacks and stacks of these things just sitting in Spencer's marked down to like 10 bucks. And I mean, good, the, the product was fucking terrible. And I've got to say, in the last 10 years or so, at least most of the merchandise I'm seeing these days, it's pretty generic. Rocky is kind of an evergreen, but still niche property. But seeing as there's no big event to make manufacturers excited, we aren't getting a lot of interesting merchandise. It's further compounded by the fact that pop culture products aren't really a niche market anymore. In fact, I'd almost call pop culture the primary market at least in a lot of categories. You've got companies like Urban Outfitters and Forever 21 that both have stocked lines of Rocky Horror apparel in the last, I don't know, five years or so. But all of these bigger companies are doing very limited, very safe lines. Like logo t-shirts, the lips, very iconic, but it's also real generic. You've got to think that it's because they're forced to compete with licensed online retailers like Adam Age. Not to mention all the unlicensed stuff that you can find all over Etsy, Redbubble, and any of the t-shirt printing sites. For real. So what's left for places like Hot Topic to stock now? Well, they're stuck with the stuff that you see today, basically. Funko Pops. And I, I think part of that is because they've expanded to the point where other parts of the Hot Topic empire have taken over entire product categories. Like, Torrid now gets all of the official licensed Rocky logo shirts and bags. Because, yes, Torrid is a subsidiary of Hot Topic. Well, technically, they're separate now, but they were. Whatever, it's not important. And Hot Topic no longer really seems to overstock to the point of clutter. Like, it, it's pretty easy to find almost anything online these days. So why keep a massive inventory for items like that? Like you were saying, Jacob, in some cases, it kind of just is there to serve as window dressing. Like, if no one's buying Rocky Horror socks, why keep them around? And I mean, let's be real. I buy a lot of Rocky crap, and I do 99% of my shopping for Rocky stuff on eBay or Etsy or Amazon, right? Like, occasionally, Hot Topic will have some cool online-exclusive Rocky shirts, usually around Halloween, but that's it. They did those sweaters a while back, but those products rarely make it into the stores. Or why would they? It's a limited run, it's seasonal, and just easier to sell online than shipping boxes of shirts to retail locations. So, I mean, is the heyday over? Probably. But, I mean, maybe we'll get some cool merch for the 50th. Who knows? So far, the stage show 50th hasn't launched anything that I've been particularly excited about. What would it have to be? What would you have to learn that a Hot Topic was selling for you to go, Awooga! I gotta make my way over to the New Jersey American Dream Mall and get into that Hot Topic to buy the thing! What's the item, Aaron? Oh, I don't know. Um, something to do with the 50th that Hot Topic would stock that would get me to go to it. Uh, can I get a castle playset? Can I get like a toy Oakley Court castle? I mean, new figures would always do it, right? If you tell me there's an exclusive toy, right? An exclusive action figure. Uh, Frank in surgeon gown or something, you know, that, that was like, that, that would get me, that would get me there. I, I'd go over and buy 10 of them. I'm a simple man. And be a simple kind of man. What about you, sweetie? What would, what would it take to get you to, I mean, I know you just go over to a New Jersey mall for fun, but like, what would you be like? Okay. I got to drive there and well, all right, I got to take the bus and go get one. What is it? Yeah. First of all, I'll just go to the mall. Like, if any of the listeners just want to go to the fucking mall with me, hit me up. You all have my contact information. Uh, let's go. Second of all, <laughs> you know what would be great? Something uh, that we can wear. Something that we can use. Something that can be a real costume or prop. 
they just came out. I don't know who they is, but somebody in the world just came out with these uh, Rocky Horror Janet uh, nameplate necklaces, and they're horrible. Who made them? You just bought one. Um, oh yeah, they were a uh, they were a blind box for uh, one of the one of the big. Uh, you know, the online retailers that do like the, the get right. a box of horror merch every month or whatever. And yeah, a couple months back, they had the Janet necklaces in them. And man, they look like bling. Like we we have one. We own one. There is one in this apartment and it looks like you're iced out. Um, <laughs> if we could have anything, a Janet necklace, um, a Brad bow tie, a Columbia bow tie, like Anything that can be used on stage is a real thing that would be one less thing for all of the shadow casters everywhere to have to make because it just exists right. If these manufacturers are going through the trouble of making these items, let's make them correct. Come on, like, let's do us all a favor. It, it makes me really think that Spirit of Halloween is going to be our place for that, right? I hope so. That would be great. Man, if they could release some sort of, even if it was like a high-end costume line, or bag costumes that were even a little better. Just help me out, you know? Come on, Hot Topic. We've been together for so long. What about you, Jacob? I know that you uh, aren't exactly hunting down oh, no, no, Rocky no, 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 merch. No, I, I don't, I, don't worry. I've, I've had you guys answered. I've had time to think about this. I, yeah, okay. Dude, all right. <laughs> what do you got? So this isn't, like, this would never happen. Obviously, like, the on the internet channels would be a much easier way to sell this if this ever came about, and it wouldn't be sold by Hot Topic if it ever came into existence. But if Hot Topic had, ma had a set of Magic the Gathering cards that were Rocky Horror-themed, and one of them had Eddie, if there, if there was one card that was, like, an Eddie card, I would be on that shit, like, white on a brick painted white. On the next bus, no matter how dirty and homeless smelling... Right into New Jersey American Dream Mall for that magic card. I would I would fight you for a seat on that dirty homeless bus to get there first. I that would you know what? Fuck my answer. That would do it. Come on, wizards. This feels like less of a pro. Yeah, this is like a something to take up with Wizards of the Coast. Why are you talking <laughs> hot topic about this? They don't manufacture magic cards. Well, the question was, what is the item that would get me into Hot Topic, Meg? And that's the item. All right, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Hot Topic does stock magic, magic cards. cards. They do. Topic. They Not do. Anymore. I saw Not them. I saw them no. over there. No. You saw they magic don't. cards there? Maybe I'm confusing one of the many other dystopian hellscape stores that we walked into. Can you imagine if they fucking sold magic cards at Hot Topic? Um, not not now, no. Yeah, they don't have enough anime titties on them. I feel like my high school experience would have been so different. <laughs> All right, well, there's three awesome, awesome options for you guys over at the Rocky Horror Company marketing department. Uh, get on those. And Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, but I mean, if they're going to do that, they're going to do it as a secret lair that you got to pay $150 for and you only get six of them and you have to buy it and it's going to be sold out within 20 and minutes. And that's our show. As always, we'd like to thank our editor, Aaron, from Tennessee. We appreciate all your work, buddy. If anybody has a question that they'd like us to research for our Ask a Question segment, maybe some community news that you'd like us to talk about, or even just a cool story to share with the Rocky community, we would love to include it in our show. Just go to our website, that's rockytalkypodcast.com, and fill out the contact form to tell us all about it. If you're enjoying Rocky Talkie, please help us out by rating, reviewing, and subscribing to the show. And if you want even more Rocky Talkie content, check out our blog at rockytalkypodcast.com and our social accounts on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, all at Rocky Talkie Podcast. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. 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 Did you guys know Spencer's has been fined many, 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 many times for selling sex toys to people under 18. That's why they don't stock as much of it anymore. Anyway, the more you know, the more you know. Da, da, da. Hello to all of you unconventional conventionalists. Welcome to Rocky Talkie. I'm Meg. I'm Jacob. Un un unconventional conventionists.
What did I say? <laughs> yeah, what did Meg say? The thing that everyone says wrong. Unconventional conventionalists. <laughs> It, it, right. You sound like a damn fool when you say it wrong. Right. That's a back to the conventionalist. That's like people who want things to go the regular way, but they want it to go the regular way. In a weird way. way. In a weird way. It's like, right, that's, Wooga, I want things to go the right way. <laughs> the amount of people in the community that say this <laughs> wrong drives me fucking batshit crazy. Because it makes no yeah. fucking sense, and it's not. Do you have an, no a sense. list of names? Do you have a list of names of everyone who yeah, says it yeah, wrong? Yeah, let's, let's read name it. Name it. Starting right here with Mister. Holy crap! I did not even. It did not even register that the next line was that no longer will the segment be called that. This is great news, listeners. Ah, it <laughs> is. If I. <laughs> no, you can skip Why? that line then. <laughs> Yeah, that's All perfect. Right, cool. That's perfect. Can can you uh, read the line? Can you read the line as it was scripted in this script, just so our listeners know what came next? Because I had one comment on this oh, script. Absolutely. <laughs> it yeah, it's hilarious if that's the next thing I have to say. <laughs> it is if I call it that, you jackbox. See, it was, it was funny, but no, this is way funnier. So we're gonna keep the other one. All right. Remember how Jacob just talked about the Rocky Talkie money machine milking him? You don't have to do Jersey dirty like that. The mall isn't that far. It is, listeners. It's so far. You have to go it's all the way to fucking Jersey. Far. I had to take a fucking <laughs> bus. I've lived in New York City and had friends in New Jersey for several years, and I've never in my entire life of even traveling to other countries and states have I had to t get on a fucking bus to go anywhere and for the fucking New Jersey mall a bus is is like fucking requisite it's either a bus or a car there's no trains there's no there, there's nothing there's no New Jersey transit to the New Jersey mall it's it's drivel um right. but it is Wait, oh, wait, wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna retake that line, and we're gonna start from the script again, and we can put all this shit in the bloopers, and then anyone who listens will know what we actually think. Oh, you want to go back? Okay, sure. Yeah, let me funny, redo my that's line. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's pronounced Orange Julius. I knew. I just wanted to say uh, it that way. Well, but I'll, I'll record it again if you want, Daddy. <laughs> no, not after that. Giggity. Wait, I can do it better. I gotta channel my inner horny. Mm, giggity. Giggity. <laughs> I'm gonna give a few giggities just so we have like like ones to choose from. Yeah. Giggity. Okay, I'm all giggityed out. <laughs> <laughs> that was one. That's great. <laughs> Option, options. You have options, sweetie. <laughs> Use the good from the first one and the iggity from the second. Yeah. I think I won't. <laughs> Hillary Laden. Oh my, that almost sounds like Aladdin if you... Hillary Laden. Hillary Laden. Hillary Laden. There's a Aladdin hiding in your name, sir. That's really cool. Stores like Bloomingdale's, Lazarus's, Stern's, and Birdine's? I don't know any of these except Bloomies. What's that second one? Birdine's? Yeah. All four of these have stores within two blocks of us. <laughs> really? These are all Fifth Avenue stores, dumbass. <laughs> I don't know bird on Birdings. I That one may not exist anymore, actually, but... <laughs> I don't really know Stearns, either. I, don't, I think they do watches or some bullshit. I'm not really sure. Oh, that makes sense. Weird electric ball thing. You know, you know those four things that they have in the back corner that are like they look like the top of like uh, one of those, like a like a Borg maturation chamber or like a recharge station where it's like the they're like a Tesla thing, but they're on like a, a ball or a flat disc or something. Did you just compare one of those electricity things to a Borg maturation chamber? Yeah, I mean they they used those when they were making the. The Borg. Did you just use a thing I don't know, Borg maturation chamber, to define a thing I don't know? <laughs> the light up electric y ball y thingy? 
God just, damn it, Aaron. It, it's a Tesla coil in a ball that you can touch and it like sparks towards your finger. That's it. Yeah, it's purple and it, it zaps your finger when you touch it. Yeah. No, what I don't think any. Okay. A Borg maturation chamber sounds more fun, so it's what I Googled first. And it's a child in goo. What does a child in goo have to do with <laughs> the Tesla? You could have said the Tesla coil thingy, where you press your hand and the little electricity thingy meets your hand. But the fuck does a, this is creepy. This well, has nothing to do with Tesla. Well, it's, it's right. It's right above it. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's probably not the actual match. It's you know they use them on the recharge alcoves and they have them right above the. You know this is not. I I feel somewhere out. Someone out there is just gonna be like, move on. I I know what you're talking about, Aaron. So. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you always fight me on Columbia having a mood ring. I feel like I've mentioned that 8,000 times, and you're always like, mm-mm, she doesn't have a mood ring. It's, she has a ring. It's not actually a mood ring. Most people, it, it, it just has a, most people. Oh, so why'd you, why'd you write down mood ring in the script that you had total control over, huh? Aaron, what's up with that, huh? Because most of the community calls it the wrong thing. Oh, so you're just going to bend to the crowd, I guess, huh? Just when the crowd says it's one way, you're like, yep, uh -huh, crowd, you're right. I, I understand. We've all got to bend sometimes. That's just who you are as a person. Okay. I went to a mall in the when, in, in the early 2000s. I absolutely care what my peers think. Oh, by the way, um, Bloomingdale's is the only store in that list. Yeah, that, that still exists. still exists okay. or has existed in the last 20 years. Wait, that's those stores that you were like, Aaron, what are these stores? And he said, and he they was live like, they're right here. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh man. That Aaron, that's a loss for Aaron. Oh boy. Yeah. I mean, and if also, she didn't check my facts, I would have gaslit her perfectly. Yeah. I know what stores are on fifth Avenue. 